Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop and I'm going all the way to heaven. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. Welcome to On the Road to Freedom. We're so glad you joined us today, mm -hmm. and I'm praying that you're having the best day and the best week, best month and year of your life. Mm -hmm. God's good, and He's sharing His goodness with anybody that wants it. Amen. He will prove how good He is and how much He loves you if you just give Him something to work with, and the more you give Him. Don't just give Him your problems, people. Mm -hmm. Give Him your life. Yes. You'll yes. like what He does with it. We come to you, and we call this show On the Road to Freedom because in John 8 and 31 and 32, the word says that if you continue in my word, you will be my disciple truly. And you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Yes. That's why we call it on the road to freedom. God wants to set you free and free indeed. Today's program is called Living in the Light. And I mm -hmm. think it's pretty obvious there's a lot of chaos around about us, mm. and you might not yeah. see this show for two years, but it's going to be the same in two years. Yeah. There isn't any time when the devil's not up to something mm -hmm. and trying to steal something from somebody, your peace, your joy, your health, your money, your family, your marriage. He's always trying to steal. Yeah. But the good news is Jesus said, I came that you'd have life, life. and life more abundant. So how do we get that life? Mm. The bottom line is we stick to the Word of God. There's a lot of theories about how to solve problems. Yeah. There's people on TV. There's people on the Internet, and they all got opinions. There's politicians. There's theologians. But if you stick to the Word of God, He is love, and He loves you, and He will prove it. I want to share one scripture with you, and then Christy's going to open this thing up for us. Psalm 119 and verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, we can either walk in the light of God, and that's what we call this, living in the light, or we can stumble around in the darkness, get our knees scraped up and banged up and beat mm -hmm. up, or we can walk in God's perfect will and perfect path and accomplish His perfect plan and purpose yeah. for our life. And that's where the good stuff is. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on the Road to Freedom today at Possum Kingdom Lake. Oh, that's we right. We are so excited to be here. This is where the cool Red Bull competition, the cliff diving <laughs> competition takes place. It is that's right. super cool. I and forgot to tell I meant to tell them that. Yeah, this so we're going to be out. showing you a lot of these cliff views. You'll see mm. them all around us. And just a beautiful place in Texas, a couple hours uh, from where we live. Yeah. So and you might even hear some... Uh, wave runners going by. Yeah. So if boats go by or something, we're just out here having fun on the lake and praising the Lord. That's right. So we're so thankful that you joined us today. Yes. Why don't you text two friends? Let yeah. them know about On the Road to Freedom. Awesome. Um, we'd love the opportunity to encourage them in the Word. So the first scripture we want to bring out to you today is in 1 John 1, 5 through 7. And it says, This is the message which we have heard from Him, from the Lord, and we declare it to you that God is light and mm. in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him 
and we walk in darkness, then we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, light. then we have, here's how we know we're walking in the light. Then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. So God lets us know right here that when we have fellowship with the brethren, with our brothers and sisters in Christ, then that is, that means staying in love, refusing to be offended, being quick to forgive. We're talking about walking in the light. And we're talking about loving everybody. You, That's you know, right. That's what, right. You want to solve racism? Mm-hmm. Start loving everybody. That's good, Miley. That is the solution. God mm-hmm. is love. Start sharing God yeah. with everybody around Everywhere you. Everywhere you go. Who cares what color they are or where they came from or what their culture or tradition is. Yeah. Just love them because Jesus does. Yeah, that's and that's why he died for us. Yeah, that's good, honey. Amen. And 1 John 2, 9 through 11 also clarifies further and says, He who says he is in the light but hates his brother is in darkness until now. Mm. He who loves his brother abides in the light. Again, when Mm. we love, we live in the light. That's right. And there is no cause for stumbling in him. Come on. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going. Now, how many of you know that right now more than ever, we need direction, insight and discernment to know which steps we need to take. Amen. So he doesn't know where he's going if he's in the darkness because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Mm. Now, you may be thinking, well, I don't hate anybody. Well, let me give you the definition of hate. It says, number one, to dislike greatly or to have a great aversion to. But in Scripture, it signifies simply to love Mm. less. Wow. Now, that changes the whole meaning of the word hate for me simply to love less. Have you ever had a disagreement with someone? Let me give you an example. So you see him out in public and when you see him, you turn and run the other direction <laughs> because you don't want to talk to him, right? You're so, not sure what to say. Right, maybe. right. And it just means you hadn't forgiven him yet. You're still offended. You, if you're a Christian, you know you're not supposed to be offended. So you're acting like you're not offended. Right. Right. And there's no annoying in the acting. We got to actually go ahead by faith and forgive right. them. Amen. Because we want to live in the light. Yeah. Amen. Now, can you live on this planet and not ever be offended? No, it, you're going to get offended. You're going to get persecuted. The Bible says if you follow Jesus, persecution is guaranteed. Yeah. And especially if you want the 30, 60, and 100 fold, persecution comes with blessings. Right. Yeah. When a Christian is really blessed, mm-hmm. people always claim you stole it from little ladies that need it for their social security. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, they you, people lie about you and lie on you and, and accuse mm-hmm. you of stuff. Right. The accuser of the brethren. But we can't stay offended at those people. We got to yeah. forgive them whether they ask us to or not. That's right. We got to love. We got to give back love, not mm-hmm. hate. Psalm 119 and verse 165 in the Amplified, I love this. It says, great peace have they who love your law or the word of God, right. the law of God. Amen. Nothing, Nothing shall offend them or make them stumble. I want you to think about that now. They're going to keep this scripture up for a second. Nothing shall make them stumble. If you love the word of God, if you love the law of God, nothing yeah. shall make you stumble. Wow. Because wow. you will refuse to be offended. That's good. Nothing. That's really good. I mean, what if they do this? What yeah. if, well, they did, and they will again. But I'm not going to take the bait of the devil, man. I am not letting the devil steal my anointing, my blessings, and my life. God told me to stay in love, not to stay out of strife. And so you know, I've got me, to do that. That's what right. That is so good. I just saw something I've never seen before. What, you know, God, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Yes, they and are. And many times he'll just give you light for each step. So when we refuse to be offended, then we know that each step we take is sure. Come on, baby. That's right. Do you know what I mean? We, we can't good. stumble. Yeah. So that means every step we're taking in the Lord, it's sure, it's steadfast, it's going to, going to produce and be effective. And, and it produces, yeah, according to this really verse, good. it produces great peace. Right. Great peace that's have excellent. they who love the Word of God. Amen. Nothing shall offend yeah, me. Yeah, that's good. So I have to make up my mind before somebody does something that hurts my feelings and mm-hmm. frustrates me, I'm not going to go for the offense. 
I'm just going to refuse to play the game. Mm -hmm. You can get mad at me if you want to. I ain't playing. Amen. That's I'm going to love you yeah. and I'm going to let God be God. Amen. And he can sort out all the, I mean, you know, you make your choices, but my choice is I want to walk in the blessings. Yes. Love means that we're walking in the light. Strife and offense, that's where the darkness is. That's where you stumble and fall. Yes. Offense ultimately hinders us from receiving the direction that we desperately need from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. In the light is where we receive the insight mm -hmm. and discernment and revelation that we need, which is crucial right now in this time of crisis. We've right. got to hear more God. Than ever. Yeah. What does he want me to do next? That's How good. does he want me to do it? Yes. Who does he want me to do it with? When and where? Right. right. I need to hear from God. Mm -hmm. When you're living in the light, then you receive you those answers Constantly. to all those questions, right? Offense is a stumbling block. Yeah. It's a setup from the enemy to try to stop our progress in the Lord. Right. So let's enter covenant with the Lord to absolutely refuse every attempt of the enemy to cause us to be offended. We choose at all times to believe the best, to walk in love, and to forgive people whether they ask us to or not. Mm -hmm. We set them free. They owe us nothing but love. We choose. I'd like to say this here because okay. we choose is so important. I've heard Brother Copeland refer to this. You have to decide to forgive people before oh, yeah. they do anything. Oh, yeah. Right? Because they're <laughs> before you, Right. Before you leave the house in the morning, you need to decide, I'm forgiven. Anybody that I come across that may do anything that could potentially be offensive to you, you need to decide before you walk out the door, I refuse to be offended. And let Amen. me say this. I'm sorry I'm having to squint. It's bright out here. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. The other person is not always wrong, and I'm not always That's right. right. That's true. Sometimes they're right and I'm wrong, Right. and I don't like the conclusion they came to. But I'm the one that needs to change. Yeah, yeah, that's now, How good. silly would it be for me to get mad at them for trying to help me? Mm -hmm. Right? So it's time to grow up in love. I love, I choose, we choose. to believe that God sends me people for yeah. my friends, for uh -huh. my wife. Right. For my, I believe that God sends me good wisdom. Mm -hmm. I choose my friends. Yeah. And I choose to, I'll, I'll minister to anybody, but I only hang out with people who challenge me to be more like Jesus. That's right. If somebody doesn't care what Jesus is like and they're ignoring him, I'll minister to those people, but I don't spend a lot of time with them. Yeah. I'm looking for the people who, where the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Amen. And they help and they make it easier. Yeah. It's hard enough to do what's right when the world's not doing what's right and doesn't care. But if you hang out with those people who are trying, it makes it easier. Recently, we were in Sedona, Arizona filming, and we got stranded. By the time we got to the airport, they'd canceled the flight, but we had no cell coverage driving the 100 miles up to the airport and flashed out. And so by the time we got there, all the people who had already knew about it, the flights had been canceled, started rebooking. There was a bad storm in Texas, and the airport was closed. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do. Man, the guys had to be back to minister in church the next day. They were going to rent a car and drive, I think it was 17 hours, to drive back to Dallas all day and all night to get there in time for church Sunday morning so they could do their ministry. And so I didn't know what to do, but I started praying about it, and the Lord said, Brother Copeland would want to know this. Call him and tell him. And I don't ever call and ask for things because he's a big giver. Yes. So I don't try to put pressure on people and take advantage of their generosity. But when I prayed about it again, the Lord said, call him, he would want to know. Yeah. And I called him and immediately, within 20 minutes, he had his jet on the way to Flagstaff and we were home for dinner. Yeah, I mean, God. it was amazing. Yeah, praise God. And what he told me, he said, Mon, don't worry about it, son. He said, that's what planes are for. They're just tools. Yeah. And that's why God has entrusted me with one. Yeah. He said, you have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. And I got to thinking about that and I realized it has been a problem. It's not everybody else's problem, it's been mine. Yeah. I need some partners. Yeah. I need some people who care mm -hmm. and who really truly believe that what we're doing yeah. is reaching the nations Amen. and that we're doing it in a way that they can relate to. People that Amen. believe this is important. Yes. People who understand yeah. 
that the way we're going about it is going to affect a certain part of the culture. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so if that's you, I'm asking you to join Team Mile. I'm yeah. asking you to pray about it. I'm not trying to influence your giving. That's between you and God. Yes. And if He tells you to give to another ministry, that's wonderful with us. Yes. But I am asking you to pray about it and see if you're supposed to be a part of this ministry. And if so, come on, man. Yeah. Me and you <laughs> and God and Christy, that's we right. will change the world right. one person at a that's time, right. just like He changed me and you. Yes. God bless you, man. Thanks for praying about it. And if you want to be a part of Team Milan, you just go to milan.org and click on Team Milan today. Corinthians 13, 7 in the Amplified Classic says, love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Yes. It's ever ready to believe the, believe best, the best of every person. Yeah. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Wow. John 16 and verse 13 in the New King James says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. That's the Holy Spirit. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears from God, he will speak, and he will tell you the things which are to come. Talk Amen. to me, baby. Share it with us. So what this 1 Corinthians 13, 7 is saying that when we really walk in love, we're choosing to believe the best of every person. So when we stay in love, now we're in the light where we can receive new ideas and concepts and revelation. And that's the Holy Spirit's job to that's announce right. to us the things which are to come to prepare us for what's ahead. Yes. So that's why love is so key to us receiving what we need, the Amen. wisdom for the time to come. And then living in the light, Romans 13, 11 says this, and do this knowing the time, live in the light, make these choices to refuse to be offended because now it is high time to awake out mm -hmm. of sleep for now our salvation is nearer now Amen. than when we first believed now i know i've been hearing my whole life jesus is coming soon but i'm going to tell you again jesus is it's coming, coming soon, soon. <laughs> you better that's get right ready, <laughs> that's right we are in the last of the last days and i love the way mylan says that if you watch the news and read the Bible, you know that Jesus is coming soon. It's a no-brainer, people. Yeah. I'm telling you, the signs are all around us. These are the last of the last days. We could still have 20 years. That's God's business. I don't know. Nobody knows the day or the hour, but we do have things that the Word said Jesus taught. Yes. It was in, I think it's in Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. The disciples came to Jesus. They said, how will we know? when it's the end of time. Mm -hmm. And he gave them 19 precursors, things that will be going on. You've probably heard it if you go to church. Yeah. Wars, rumors, war. we've had wars and rumors of wars. When did we not have them? You know, now that we got internet, you know, we know what's going on in all of them. There's always, but there's never been all 19 of those things happening at the same time. Right. Until about 15 years ago. That's good. Jesus is moving. There's going to be an awakening. God's going to take the yeah. church out of here. Great it's revival. time to rock. Yes. It's time to get things right with God yeah. and walk hand in hand with Him. Because this, these last days are going to be the best days if you're ready. If you're not, it's going to be the worst. That's right. So we need to choose love and live in the light yes, right now. Verse 12 says, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. So therefore... Now, again, this is written to the church in Rome. Mm. So therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness Amen. and let us put on the armor of light. You know, Mylon did a super kids movie called Armor of Light. That's right. And I thought that was so with cool. Kelly and with Brother Kelly. Copeland. That's right. That Kelly so Copeland cool. and, and Brother Copeland. I was the bad guy. And Mylon was the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But he got saved. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So let us put on the armor of light 
Verse 13 says, let us walk properly. Amen. Again, he's talking to the church. So he's saying, church, let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry, not in drunkenness, not in lewdness, not in lust, not in strife, mm. not in envy. Now we've been talking about refusing to be offended. So when strife and offense is the work of darkness. So he's saying here, church, don't live in strife or Amen. envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Amen. Again, we absolutely must choose to refuse to be offended. I agree. Amen. We make no provision for the flesh Amen, to fulfill its lust. Ephesians 5, why? Again, because Jesus is coming soon mm. and we need the light of discernment and insight and yes, understanding now more than ever. Ephesians 5, 8 through 11, for you were once darkness when you didn't know Jesus, mm. but now you are light in the Lord. So walk as children of the light. Again, you have a choice. You could be on your way to heaven and sure. choose to stay offended every day till you get there. Sure. But God is saying here, walk, Amen. live as children of the light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness and mm. truth. Find out what is acceptable to the Lord. That's why watching these shows is so important. You're finding out what is acceptable to the Lord through his word and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but mm. rather expose them. It does matter who you hang out with. Yes, it the does. word says, if you hang out with the wise, you'll become wise. But if you hang out with fools, it'll result in foolishness on your part. Yeah. So it is important. It's actually contagious. Yeah. I mean, the anointing, if you hang out with people who, who have submitted themselves unto the Lord mm -hmm. and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is all over their lives. Yeah, yeah. That is contagious. Yes. They are constantly talking the word. Yeah. And faith comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. My wife tells me what God is saying to her. She reads the Bible every day and she shares with me what God's saying to her that excites her spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I share with her what I'm reading and what God's talking to me about. And it is exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's very exciting. And, but faith is coming. We right. think we're just having a conversation. Uh, last night we were out eating after filming yesterday up here mm -hmm. on the lake and we were out eating. We we're talking with Matthew and Michael and Austin and the crew and, and hanging out. And, but you know what? If you talk long enough, did we talk about the, the hockey game? I did. <laughs> the stars were in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So you see this two years from now, you know, that was a long time ago. But if we hang out very long, we're going to end up talking about what the Lord's doing. That's right. That's what happens. And then because we're all people who read the word every day, we're all word people. We end up speaking about the word out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. If the word of God is in your heart. Now, on the other hand, if conspiracy theory is in your heart, that's all you're going to be talking about. Yeah. You know, if you like football more than you like Jesus, you're going to be talking, talking about, about your team. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the bottom line is if you hang around with people who are in love with Jesus and in love with his word, then faith is constantly coming because the word is constantly coming. And yes. every time you hear it, mm -hmm. we keep our TV on Christian shows. That's if right. If our TV comes on, it doesn't come on some movie. It comes on. As soon as it comes on, we're getting ministered to. That's it. right. And we keep, if we listen in our cars, uh, the podcast on our phones, there are friends teaching, ministering mm -hmm. to us. So it builds you up. That's why we put all of this hundred TV shows on there. And we're going to have 200 and then 300. We're mm -hmm. going to keep on. And we're going to try our best to deal with everything. Yes. So that if you have an area of any part of your life that you need what does the word say about this? That's what we're trying to do here. That's right. And so this says again, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That's right. Baby. And you know, the word also says bad company corrupts good morals. It's not the other way around. It says, if you hang around with those who don't believe the same way you do, I'm not talking about minister to everyone. I'm talking sure. about close friendships with those who don't trust God. God said, bad company will corrupt 
good morals. Because so, faith comes by hearing either way. Right. If you hear somebody saying stuff that is diametrically opposed to the Word of God, right. and that's all you hear all day, every day, right. you hear that it's for 10 years, you. it will affect what you really believe. That's right. You'll get faith in lies, mm -hmm. and you will be deceived. Right. And you will have done it to yourself by making bad choices. That's why the Bible says, stay away from those people Go find people who are sincere, mature Christians That's and right. hang out with them and let them mentor you and disciple you and help you to grow. And that's why Isaiah 520 confirms this and says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, yeah. who good put life. darkness for light and light for darkness. And yeah. one of the signs of the times that we're living in, it says they will call evil good and good evil. Yeah, and yeah. that's exactly what we're seeing in our culture today. So that's why it's so important who you hang out with, that you hang around people where there's a mutual good, encouragement baby. of one another in the faith. Yeah. So glory to God. I want to encourage you right now that our future is bright Amen. when we are living in the light, right? It is, I love my that. <laughs> I love that phrase. You're Our a poet future, now, right? I'm a poet. <laughs> I didn't know it. My so, darling, will you pray mm -hmm. for him before we go today? Yes, amen. Thank Please. you, Lord. Well, thank Lord, you. I just want to thank you again for those who are watching today. Mm. We bless them in the name of Jesus Amen. for the time that they've sowed right now Thank to hear you. your word. We believe that the word is reaping 30, 60, and 100 fold mm. in Amen. the good soil of their heart. And I believe, Thank Lord, that you. from this day forward that they draw the line in the sand yes. and they refuse to be offended. Mm. We declare that they live in the light because they walk oh, in you, love. So bless I thank you, you for Jesus. the grace of God upon them now to Bless choose you. love. In every situation, they choose love. Mm. They believe the best of every person. Amen. And I thank you, Father, for insight, discernment now yes, in the Jesus. light, new ideas, creative Bless concepts, you. I believe, come to them and wisdom for the time to come. Mm. And we praise you, Lord, for it now. Thank and you, we Father. believe that we receive it when we pray. So be blessed today. Know again how much we love you and God loves you Amen. and stay in the word because that will keep you on, on the, the road, road to freedom. freedom.